Hi, Isabel, Floor. It's so nice to meet you. So nice to meet you too. We spent the last three days doing a massive preparation to educate me about human trafficking and for me to share some of my information and knowledge about cults and mind control and my whole strategic approach. I think, thank you for listening. Um, Isabel, would you introduce yourself and your organization? Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Isabel Wade. Um, I'm a volunteer outreach intern um, with the Coalition to Abolish Slavery and Trafficking. Um, CAS is an organization that's dedicated to providing um, all types of services to victims of sexual and labor trafficking, really all types of human trafficking. Um, and we also work on policy um, and advocacy right. um, to work to end all types of human rights abuses um, related to human trafficking and modern day uh -huh. slavery. And it's, the office is based in LA? The office is based in LA. And what's um, the website? The website is www.castla.org. Um, we also have a Facebook page um, that's at, at Cast Los Angeles and Twitter um, at Cast LA. Mm -hmm. And our organization um, provides intensive case management, um, legal services ranging from um, custody battles to immigration status and green cards, um, as well as a 24-hour hotline, uh -huh. um, and um, also a shelter where um, clients can stay. Up to, That's to fantastic. Here. As well as I think Floral will probably talk about um, our survivor leadership program, um, including. And you our are survivor a survivor program. leader. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Which includes our survivor um, leadership caucus. And as you know, I believe that former members or survivors are the most knowledgeable about any particular situation, and that they, in a sense, they're the experts that mental health professionals, law enforcement, and others need to listen to. And before I introduce you, I'll just say that the last two two days we've done two presentations to a variety of important people in the from homeland security to law enforcement to uh, immigration and other government agencies to sensitize them to the fact that people are being victimized and enslaved. Uh, so Floor, want to share a little bit of your own story? Sure. Uh, as you said, you introduced me. I am from Molina. I am a human trafficking survivor, labor of trafficking. Mm -hmm. I was contacted in my hometown in Puebla, Mexico, in, um, by my sewing teacher. Mm. I was an target for my trafficking because I was a desperate mother who had lost my last baby and I didn't have money to take her to a better hospital. I took yeah. her to the local clinic, but there were no. Um, Real yeah, that brought me to tears hearing about the loss of your child. And I just want to comment that people who are vulnerable to scams and cons and cults and mind control uh, often are more successful at influencing people who have gone through a major trauma, uh, illness, death of a loved one, breakup of a relationship, moving to a new city, state, or country something that sets them off balance. It's not because we're weak or we're stupid, but we're more vulnerable when we have a situation like that. Yes, so as I said, I was an easy target, and thanks for pointing that out. Mm. That makes me feel now better, because mm. before, as I said and shared yesterday, uh, when I was speaking, I felt so humiliated and guilty, mm -hmm. because I felt that um, when I was in the situation and when being in the situation of abuse from my trafficker, I thought it was it was something I deserved because I had been a bad mother mm. who had left her children mm -hmm. in pursuing the American dream or going and get some money, uh, which I said yesterday I needed that money to start my own business. Right. But uh, I had to leave my children. So I want to interrupt you one more time to make the comment, if I may, that that part of the way mind controllers work is to always make the target or the victim feel like they brought it on themselves or they're bad people and that's why they need to be treated so poorly. So it's, uh, it's a very stereotypical response. What I hear you sharing is something that if you listen to an ex Mooney, an ex Scientologist, the next TMR, I could go on and on with different cults. That's the common pattern. We were always taught it's not the group, it's not the trafficker, it's not the cult leader, it's our, you know, it was our 
weakness or our uh, personality. Personality, exactly. So, but but this has been helpful to hear that your experience in human trafficking kind of fits the cult mind control model. Definitely. Um, and as I learned in mm -hmm. this presentation that um, definitely um, traffickers are, are using mind control, mm -hmm. the coercion, you know, even though the, that's why it's called modern day slavery. Right. Because oftentimes there are no chains, there are no bars, like in my case there were bars, you know, mm -hmm. that there were like when the workers left. Right. But I, in some other cases there are no chains and, you know, this, um, there are no physical yeah, chains, exactly. psychological Psychologically, chains. because right. some of them can go out, can go to the store, can go to school. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and this question came over and over during the presentation, mm -hmm. in this workshop, why then they don't just leave? Right. And I want to answer that question now. And I heard that uh, that question from an ambassador that I, in a training that I went to uh, Florida in year 2004. Mm -hmm. He said, "After I you got out, you were training people yes, about exactly. human trafficking." Yes, Being there and mm -hmm. participating in this conference, the ambassador said, and I was there in his table when he said, "I don't understand these people. I don't understand these victims. Why they don't just go and ask for help?" Right. There is help available for them. And then I said, excuse me, Ambassador, excuse me, sir. I want to answer to that question. And it's now, you know, I'm going to answer. It's not easy to go and ask for help when you are threatened that if you go and say something, your loved ones, in my case, my kids and my mom, were going to be harmed. Yeah, the trafficker explicitly threatened that, Saying that, that they he, have the ability to harm your loved yes. ones in Mexico. And that's one difference with a lot of the cult situations I deal with, where the threats are more psychological, mm -hmm. phobia kinds of ideas and beliefs, whereas with human trafficking, there's actual violence and threats of violence. Well, one thing too is that it's not um, not as much with uh, domestic victims like, of trafficking, but we have seen, like we see in this presentation to, um, this past weekend, that it is does occur with domestic victims as well. Um, but especially when for a nationals come to the United States, they don't have any idea of the rights that they have in the United right. States, specifically victims of trafficking. They don't know that um, they have status here. They don't know that. Um, the, right. as a result of exploitation that they they have rights given to them and so they're really, as before I mentioned, really right. fearful. And they often don't speak English fluently or yeah. read English so that's another vulnerability. But before you go on, Floor, because I want you to tell more of your story, I just want to highlight that nobody knowingly wants to be exploited and abused and no. enslaved. That deception, lack of informed consent, is always present in mind control cases. So people are tricked, there's a, a bait and switch, you know, we promise this and then something else happens, or they don't tell you the whole information ahead of time. Because in order to make an informed choice, you need the information and you need the psychological ability to analyze the information and use it. And so what these cults are doing and these human traffickers are they're controlling everyone's behavior and information yes. and thoughts and emotions yes. and making people obedient and dependent through fear, through shame and humiliation, through control of information, through behavior control and sleep deprivation. You work long hours. Um, but deep cool? down inside, you want to be free. Yes, you want a way out, but you don't know how, how to get, get out yes. because there's such a, a darkness in your head trying to think about how do I get away, protect my loved ones, yes. and protect Without myself. A risk, a risk then, you know? Exactly. So go back to your story. So unfortunate passing of your child, you decided, I listened to your story twice now, where you wanted to raise money through developing a business of your own yes. to, to do sewing, yes. so that you could raise enough money so that if any of your other children were ill, you could be, you could take care of them exactly. and pay for their treatment. So it was this dream of being a good mother and wanting to provide that got taken advantage of. 
Yeah, exactly. So and you were recruited by your sewing teacher, teacher. Who ended up being also a victim of human trafficking. Uh -huh. The difference between her and I is that the family back home, mm -hmm. her relatives, make a pressure on her to the point that she ended up saying that everything she had testified for it was a lie, and she was forced to say that, mm -hmm. and then uh, took, you know, the trafficker side because the family back home had a relationship with this trafficker mm. who's wealthy and powerful back home. So they manipulated this, yes. the, the, your recruiter to protect the, the, ba the bad they, person. Exactly, the mm. trafficker. And I decided oh, yeah. not to go back. I decided to stay here no matter what happened to me, because at the beginning, when I come out from the situation, I didn't trust anybody, specifically law enforcement. I was so afraid of the police. Because they my, made you afraid. My trafficker told me, right, even those have you. more rights in this country than I did. Mm. I didn't even have an identification. Yeah, they took she away could, your papers. Yes, my documents, my birth certificate, and my Mexican ID. And she said that if she wanted, she could kill me. And nobody was going to know. Nobody was Can going to Can you imagine to in America, this is happening in America? How many, what are the numbers? Do we have any um, idea? There are, I believe, um, there well, just numbers for Los Angeles and the United States specifically. Um, Los Angeles is one of the top three destination cities in the United mm -hmm. States. And the United States is one of the top three destination countries in mm -hmm. um, the entire world. And Across the world, um, there's 27 million people currently enslaved. 27 million people enslaved mm -hmm. in the 21st century. And, and, the US and this is, is not North Korea. We know the people in North Korea are enslaved. And the U.S. Has, is the one of the top two destination countries. So mm. a large, large amount of people are coming to the United States. Right, so this is epidemic level. Back to yes. your story floor of what you would like to share. Yes, so when I come out, of course, by no means I ever thought to go to the police and report her. Um, one other thing very important for people to know, and uh, that is so difficult for a survivor to come forward mm -hmm. and say what happened, mm -hmm. because we don't identify ourselves as victims. In my case, I didn't identify myself as victim. I never thought about going back, up, you know, going and prosecuting my trafficker, mm -hmm. my, my boss in that time. She told me that I owed her a lot of money. Mm -hmm. When I got out from the situation, I thought about working and save that money, mm -hmm. even not going back to her because I didn't want to right. see her. I was so scared, but I thought about mailing the money. Because hmm. in my mind, You're I believe programmed. yes, I believe that I owed her that money. She was an old person. She was 64 back then. Hmm. So I thought, and I didn't identify myself as as victim. So I thought it's just fair to pay her. Right. You know, I didn't know that with the long hours I worked, I had already paid. Of course, whatever money more. she she used to bring me over. The, the important thing is our understanding of how the mind works, that you need vacations, you need to step out of whatever you're doing to reflect and to gather information so you can have different perspectives. But if you're kept busy all the time, working, 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 and the only source of information is the controller. It's the start. Yeah. And even well. what I've experienced is even people who get out of a cult or they get away from their trafficker, it's like their, their cult identity is still operating unconsciously yes. because it had been programmed. Yes. And, and the only solution in my experience is literally, oh, we were at a hotel and there's some <laughs> noise happening. Um, the, on, the only solution, and this is what I recommend, is that people learn about how the mind works, learn how programming destructive mind control works and then in a sense do therapy with yourself and one of the most important questions I ask people to do is to imagine if you could go back in time to when you were first being recruited knowing what you know now what would you say and do differently a lot of things but 
first I would search and investigate about this person, company, how true is all what they are promising to Right, well that, that's good advice in terms of helping others, but I'm asking you now a personal question. If you, Flora, if you could go back in time, if we had a magic wand, okay. knowing what you know now, and your sewing teacher is telling you there's this important opportunity, what would you say and do differently? I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. Of be my course children. not. No, I wouldn't go. I of wouldn't course. be my children. Exactly. And then if you go back in time, through your trafficking experience, thinking, if I knew then what I know now, what would I say and do differently? It doesn't matter that I don't have money. I am self-worth and I deserve respect right. and treat as a human being. Right, but knowing what you know now, you know this cast, yes. right? You know you can go to yes. the police and say, I'm a victim of human trafficking. I need help. But you know, it's so true what you say about mind control. Because what my trafficker told me was stick in my mind, in the back of my mind. And I have been speaking already for, you know, I've been out of the situation for 11 years now. Right. And I have been speaking since 2003. Right. But just a month ago, and my boyfriend helped me to realize that I there was no reason for me to be so afraid of the police because right. I had overcome the tra the trauma or the fear to my trafficker, right. but not to the police. I see. I so was so afraid of the police whenever I am driving. If I see a police a car, I start shaking mm -hmm. and unconsciously, you know. Oh, but that's a phobia programming that the police were the enemy. Yes, so then uh, when my boyfriend helped me to realize, he told me, you have no reason to be afraid of them. You, you work as a security. Yeah, you're free. Security. Right. Uh, you are not doing anything illegal. Why you are you so afraid? You know? Right. So he we helped you reality yes. test the situation. But what mm -hmm. I'm encouraging you and other survivors to do is actually do a mental process of healing yourself by going back into your, that trafficked identity, if you will, and, and plug in the knowledge you now have, and see if you could go back in time into your body at the point she was humiliating you. You told the story earlier about the trafficker humiliating you in front of the other workers. Wouldn't you say, excuse me, you're humiliating me. That's a mind control technique. This is a, this you're trafficking people. We we are human beings. We have rights. You have no right to do this. Uh, one thing I would have done mm -hmm. if I was in power as I am now, mm -hmm. I would have told her, "You need to stop. Mm -hmm. Stop doing what you are doing towards me." And do you think she would have? I don't know. I think she would have reacted like, you know, unexpectedly, like, "Oh." See, my, predi my prediction is she would have been violent because she wanted to keep her authority over the victims. That's my guess. But see, what I'm, what I'm asking you to do is not rational in the sense of logical. I'm asking you to use your imagination okay. to create a healing experience for yourself. Like, for example, another strategy is if you could be a time traveler Okay. Right, and you teleport back in time, and you're sitting next to the younger you, who's, <laughs> okay. who's believing all of that. Okay. And you say, "Honey, I'm here from your future. You gotta listen to me." Okay. Yeah, I like and that you picture. Give, and you give yourself the counseling you now do to victims of traffic, trafficking, okay. and you help that part of your mind that's still stuck to be unstuck. I think that that's an exercise that definitely I need to work on. Yeah, it takes time. Yes. But it's so easy once you understand the technique because you need to reclaim your own mind. That's what we need, not someone else to control our mind. We One need thing to I, I do want to recognize is that we have had survivors that have had problems with authorities. Yeah. That haven't been recognized as victims and that have been put in jail. 
um, and that haven't been treated properly, even for, um, you spoke in earlier about how the FBI only cared about their case. They didn't right. care about basic needs of survivors, and right. now we're looking to change that Absolutely. so that victims can go towards them. Right, so I'm totally agreed, and I want to help you make the necessary changes, but I'm also a therapist in Massachusetts, um, and part of what I've realized in my own healing from the Moonies is we can do these kinds of mental exercises to heal ourselves. Even though it's not logical that I we could time travel idea. back, but it's healing because I would have wanted to say no, stop. Or I yes. would have wanted to imagine a friendly FBI person who you know, is a just person with integrity who would come to my aid because it will help me help the part of my brain that was still programmed. Yes. Do you understand? Absolutely. And I love the idea about healing because I definitely know that I need to heal not only from the human trafficking trauma but from any other things. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, life happens yeah. and it's yes. part of being, you know, part of the human condition. Um, so, thank you for sitting down. I know we could talk for days. We've already spent a few days together, but I have a feeling we're going to be seeing each other again in the future. Maybe we can do a longer training or something. Um, but for me, it, I just want, I really welcome the opportunity to capture this moment on, on video because really you and the other people I've met, you know, through uh, Runaway Girl, uh, are the first victims of human trafficking that I've met and I've got to hear your stories and I thank you profoundly for your bravery and your courage. Same here, likewise. Uh, I think it's a blessing that we, I think it was meant for us to, to meet. I because, like to believe that too. Because <laughs> uh, you don't meet, you know, people who know about, you know, how the mind works very mm. often, mm. and having the opportunity to meet you, mm. it's just a blessing. It's my pleasure. And sure. I know it's going to uh, to reflect later on in mm. my life and in other people's mm. lives, Thank because you. what you said it was so mm. empowering and so true. Thank, Thank you, so you again. Thank you for Thank all you your good much. work. Bye.